This is a 62 mass case that I came across on AliExpress and it caught my eye simply because it was really cheap. 36 quid all in to my door, tax and postage and whatnot. 36 for a whole case and a bracelet. But as soon as I saw it, I thought, you know, I bet that gray 62 mass dial and those 62 mass style hands that I put in the kit watch case from Namoki Mods last year would look really good in one of these. And yeah, it does. <laughs> I haven't been able to take it off. I wore it for a week on a NATO strap, then another week and a half on a silicon strap, which I, I haven't had any silicon straps before. I literally bought one just for this. And it certainly has warmed me to silicon straps. It, you can't even feel it on your wrist. And then I thought, you know what? Let's actually give it a try on the bracelet. I know it's a cheap bracelet and the case is quite long. So it felt a bit long on my thin six inch wrists, but I've, I've come around to it. I think it actually looks fantastic on the bracelet as well. So I've just, I've enjoyed it on all three, the NATO, the silicon strap and the bracelet. But I digress, we'll get into that a bit more later and I'll show some more B-roll of that. Let me take you through the steps that I went through when I bought this, because I thought it was just gonna be, take the movement out of the other watch, put it in this case, you're done. But I went through several steps with this one because first of all, I bought the wrong case. There's two versions on the AliExpress listing. There's one with a black chapter ring and there's one with a polished chapter ring. And I saw the price. I was like, oh, quick, buy, buy, buy. And then realized I bought the one with the polished chapter ring instead of the black one. I did put it in there with the polished chapter ring and it just didn't look very good in my opinion. Although if you're a fan of the polished chapter ring look, you can go for that as well, at least it's an option. We're not gonna do a full build log for this. I'm just gonna walk you through what I did and throw up the B-roll for it because it certainly saves me editing the absolute mess of videos that I recorded for this. But I'm still gonna show you all the steps that I went through, including all the mistakes that I made, which was cutting the stem the wrong size twice what is it they say third time's the charm which is you know the the third stem that i cut for this was perfect so you know i had to prove that the third time's the charm thing was correct so that's the reason that i cut the first two stems wrong it wasn't my incompetence it, i did it i did it on purpose but i digress let's go through the steps here so first impressions were quite nice i thought it was a for what it was 36 quid all in not a bad case you sort of temper your expectations when you spend not that much on a case. I mean, I've bought cases on their own with no crystal, no chapter ring, no bezel, bezel insert, case back, crown, nothing. Just the case, bare bones, 50 or 60 quid on its own. So the whole thing, 30 quid, not only was I pleased with the quality of it, relative to the price, let's say, considering that price, but it, it just seemed quite nice in general, you know? Really nice radial brushing on the case. Really like the sort of texture on there. And a nice bezel, nice thin profile on there. Top hat sapphire crystal, which is quite nice. Sort of gives a nice sort of dome around the edges and whatnot. I don't know if the bezel insert is aluminium or ceramic. It looks ceramic. Right away, I'm gonna mention it now. The loom pip on this AliExpress cheap case is fantastic. It's, it's bright, it's really bright, and it matches the color of the loom on the dial and hands. So that's just, that's awesome. I'm happy with that. I couldn't, the amount of fancy bezel inserts I've bought with just trash loom on the loom pip. This is a nice refreshing thing, especially from such a cheap case. Crown, quite like it, you know, not too, not too wide, not sticking out too much. So I wasn't worried that that was gonna dig into my wrist or anything. So I, I like to, wear my watch quite high up. Uh, I like to wear it above the knuckle, as they say on mine. You know, I have it a bit loose so that I can move it up and down, but I digress. And then moving around to the back of it. That, I mean, the case back's fine. It's certainly got some nice markings on there. You know, you've got the text on there, although I'm gonna be completely honest. It says water resistant 300 meters. Obviously, I don't have the equipment to test water resistance on this. Maybe it does 300 meters. If anybody's got the equipment and they want to get one of these cheap cases, by all means, try it out. Let me know in the comments. But I was surprised to see that. I mean, heck, I've bought more expensive cases that only claim 200, so 300 from this. I'm sure it's a bit of a stretch, but whatever. And then the bracelet, you know, it's cheap. It's lightweight. It's flimsy. In my previous videos, I criticized the Steel Dive bracelet for being crap. My criticism of that bracelet was harsh. It's not crap. 
Crap was the wrong word. My opinion of that bracelet hasn't changed. I still wished that it was, you know, a bit better in quality, especially comparing it to the Heimdaller SKX that I had and the cheap MM200 bracelet that I bought. Those were, those were both quite nice, especially with how cheap they were. And it was just a bit disappointing that the Steel Dives bracelet was just a notch down from those. But considering how cheap the Steel Dive is for the whole entire watch, I gave it a pass because, as I did say in the even the original video, that bracelet's just fine. This one is a notch below that one. It's even lighter, even flimsier, a little bit rough around the edges, and I've had a few times where I've put it on, it's actually nipped a few hairs off my wrist, and that's saying something considering it's a three-link and not a jubilee. But what can you expect on a case that's this cheap? I, I kind of expected the bracelet to be around that quality, you know, sort of hoping that it might be better, but not too disappointed that it was. It's like, okay, fair enough, I expected that. Especially with the pressed clasp on here. These things are, you know, they get the job done, but they're not very good and they're kind of rattly. So yeah, bracelet, it's fine. It's got nice solid end links on there and it gets the job done. It's, 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 not, it's not as comfortable as I would like. I, I'm not gonna say, oh, it's perfectly comfortable. I have had a little bit of discomfort with it, sort of digging into my wrist a little bit, but all in all, it's okay. It's okay, especially for a bracelet that you could probably buy separately for a tenner, but I made it work by throwing a milled clasp on there. And the end links are removable. I was pleased to see that, which means you could put it on a better bracelet if it was still push pins, or if you had the appropriate tools to maybe widen the holes on the the end links to put them on a bracelet with screw links instead. But you know, I don't know. I don't have the correct kind of drill bit or tiny file that would go in there and make that hole larger but anyway that's a whole thing you can get this case without a bracelet but just to get those end links that fit it you might as well just get it with the bracelet and then you can modify it if you want or just take the bracelet off and throw a cheap silicon strap on there anyway it's just kind of worth it just to get those end links in case you do do any modifications but that's enough about the bracelet anyway it's mediocre but it'll get the job done if you need it to so yeah case first impressions were nice quality for the money bracelets meh but who cares again this case is cheap here's what i did to it first i swapped the movement from that other watch into this case and i noticed immediately the chapter ring inside slightly loose i was expecting the crystal to sort of press down on it and stop it from jostling around in there but it, it was a little bit loose which was a bit disconcerting at first but once you push the movement in it sort of presses up underneath it and it's, then it doesn't move, so it's just fine. So I put it in there, had a look at it. it. It just looked weird to me. If you've got a big chapter ring, if it's polished, it's, it's gonna be very obvious. And this one, I just didn't think it looked very good. And then I took a closer look at it. There's a big blemish on it. Tried to wipe it off, wouldn't come off. I just sat back in the chair and just thought, I don't like it. <laughs> Let's try and give it the benefit of the doubt here and put more effort in here, I'm making a video about it, let's put in the effort. I really don't like pressing in crystals because maybe it's just my crystal press, but I, I'm, I'm always worried I'm never gonna get it in straight. I'm just sort of sitting there looking at it like, is that straight, have I done it? Have I done that wrong? I don't know, and then, you know, it just pisses me off. And this is one of the other reasons why I love these pre-done cases, because the crystal's already pressed in. You don't have to worry about it. They've probably pressed it in and water te uh, proof tested it already. So the last thing I wanted to do was mess with the integrity of the waterproof seal, with, especially with the crystal. But I did it anyway, popped out the crystal. No matter what I used, I tried alcohol and acetone, that blemish would not come off. So that was just genuinely disappointing. I moved on to the next step. I sanded it down. I didn't have any steel wool that was fine enough to do it properly. So I just used a kitchen sponge with a sort of Brillo pad top to it. And it, it looked quite decent. We had a sort of brush texture on there, but I don't know if you can see it. It looks surprisingly yellow. But I thought, maybe that's just the camera, maybe that's just my eye, maybe I'm going crazy. Put it back in the case, press the crystal in, and thankfully the crystal goes in quite nicely in this. So I put it in there, put the movement in, and it just doesn't look right. It looks really yellow. I'm no expert on different types of metals, but I assumed this was either aluminium or stainless steel. Let me know in the comments, what metal is this? Why is it yellow? So. I thought, let's try something. 
I saw this video of this guy, he got a steel knife and he dipped it in vinegar and water for like three hours and then it was black. He had like force patinaed the metal. That sounds like a great idea. Let's do it. Soaked it in vinegar like four or five hours. Didn't change, nothing changed at all. So I moved on to the next step, painting. I ordered a can of spray paint and took it outside, gave it a little spritz. Unfortunately, it was spitting outside when I tried this and even when I sort of sanded it down and tried to give it another coat, ultimately there were a few bumps and uneven bits on the surface that just, they didn't sit right with me. I did press, I did put it all together and have a look at it and it just really bothered me when I looked at it. So I thought, let's get this done properly. I took it out of the case, put the chapter ring in some acetone and just let it soak cleaned all the paint off let it dry and whatnot and then gave it another spritz and I didn't take it outside this time the whole the whole process of this watch we had a lot of rain so I just literally I left it on the red plastic ice cream lid ice cream tub lid that I used and just put it in the bin and because you know the bit I had a plastic bag in the bin and then just literally just held it at arm's length and for three seconds just went and that was it. Just three seconds spritz, relatively even layer, and then immediately took the rest of the ice cream tub and put it on the lid to stop any particles from falling on it while it was drying. And literally about two hours later, I didn't wait the full 24 hours for it to fully cure. It says 15 minutes before it's, you know, dry to the touch. So two hours later, I just literally put it in the case, just put it straight in there. Absolutely perfect smooth all over no problems really good paint it's it's a automotive kind of paint I, I can't fault it gave a lovely smooth matte finish really nice color can't complain especially when there's no blemishes on it like it for all intents and purposes it looks like a black chapter ring like it was just always like that so chuffed a bits about that really pleased and it's kind of shown me that if I want to I can paint a chapter ring but anyway with the chapter ring done went to size the stem cut the stem wrong twice not once but twice really annoyed about that and it was almost perfect almost it was just slightly too short which annoyed me especially since when I compared the two it was longer than the previous one but still not long enough but of course third time's the charm and that's really it wasn't it, it wasn't about my incompetence it was it was definitely about me trying to prove that in fact third time's the charm I'm not an idiot it was on purpose please believe me it was but anyway that was perfect this time and I'll put the measurement on the screen of what it was so that if you buy one of these you'll know roughly the exact sort of measurements I, I love that I use the word roughly and then exact in the same sentence but those were my measurements if you cut somewhere I'd recommend cutting longer than that and then filing down to it but with my example here the stem was perfect length the crown meets up with the case absolutely perfectly so there is the length on screen no problems after I cut it to that length put a bit of Loctite on there screwed it in settled it all in there nice and at that point I was kind of done I wore the watch for a while like I said I wore it on the uh, the NATO strap that I have with the silver strips down the middle then I bought a silicon strap and wore it on that for a week or so and I've got to say I'm really liking this watch. Like I've tried to make myself wear a couple of my other Seiko mods and within a, within 10 minutes, I was like, no, put the 62 mats back back on. I want it on. I've, I've just, I've been wearing this for like three weeks straight. I really like it, which is uh, even better when it when it's such a bargain like that. You can have this kind of thing for less than a hundred quid that you've built yourself. You know, if you go for like, this is an OEM dial in here, which I think just sort of elevates it. But you know, if you do go for there are plenty of aftermarket 62 mass style dials that you can go for, but you can have this whole thing relatively cheap. And I love a good bargain. And so when I'm wearing it on wrist and looking at it frequently thinking, gosh, that is a smart thing. The fact that it's a, a budget friendly brings me great joy as well. So I've just, I've been really chuffed about it and I, I can't stop wearing it. And then that leads me to the bracelet. Originally, I put it on my wrist with the bracelet and thought, gosh, that's quite rectangular on my thin wrist. I don't know about that. Which is why I immediately 
put it on the straps. And then as it came closer and closer to me filming this part of the video, I thought, come on, wear it on the bracelet, give it a fair chance so that you can talk about it. And I was pleasantly surprised. Less than two hours on my wrist on the bracelet, I found myself looking at it thinking, you know what? Coming off of the straps, this doesn't look too bad, even on my small six inch wrists. I mean, you can be the judge, here's the wrist roll. Uh, I think it looks pretty smart, even, even still. Uh, and it, I think it looks smart on the, the NATO strap here. Just, I mean, I like this NATO strap. I've always liked this one with the, the strips down the middle. And then I think on this sort of typical for this watch silicon strap, I think it looks really nice as well. And I'm pleasantly surprised with how comfortable the silicon straps are. So I was really pleased with that. Like I said at the beginning, the bracelet's not the most comfortable I've, I've got. It does sort of uh, catch a few hairs on my wrist sometimes. Uh, it's a little bit rough around the edges. Uh, it's less rattly now that I've put on a milled clasp and the only one I had on hand without buying another one was a Heimdaller. Rather than just relegating these clasps with these, you know, these logos on them that I don't want, let's try and make it so that it is just a sterile clasp that I can actually be happy to have on here. And that leads me to basically the final step of this mod, just to sort of tailor this to my liking. Two things that I didn't like, the Heimdaller logo on the milled clasp and the Great Wave on the case back. Now, the Great Wave looked really nice. I like it, but the texture of it was just rough and I certainly didn't like the feeling of that on my wrist. So I got some 600 grit sandpaper and some 1500 grit sandpaper. I wish that I had some lower grit sandpaper, like a 200 or something, it might have got the job done faster. The 600 grit was quite slow, but it did eventually get it off there. And then I just brushed in a, a straight line as I could anyway on the 1500 grit to get just a sort of satin brushed line on there. It's not perfect, it's kind of mediocre, but it got the job done and now it's a smooth finish on there. And I didn't have to get out the polishing cloth and then clean it. You know, you, you have to make sure after you use the polishing cloth that you clean off the compound off of everything. And I didn't want to bother with that, so just the sandpaper on its own did a pretty good job. And then I did the exact same thing with the Heimdaller clasp. Uh, I just sort of did it, rocked it back and forth putting pressure with my thumb. Suffice to say, I put loads of pressure on it and I did it for about 25 minutes. <laughs> the next day, this is the next day I did that yesterday, uh, as of when I'm recording this, my thumb still hurts <laughs> from putting the, I put so much pressure on there to mitigate the fact that the sandpaper should have been a sort of rougher grit. Although it's a little bit sketchy at the, at the very corners there, I think it did a pretty good job. It's even given it a satin brushed sort of look that matches the top of the clasp. So if you're me, you're gonna notice the issues on the side of it where it's just slightly uneven. But to, to anybody else just looking at it, it just looks like a sterile clasp, which is exactly what I wanted. So that is a right result. The Great Wave was removed from the case back and the Heimdall logo is no longer on the clasp. So that's the whole thing, that's the whole deal what was supposed to be just a quick five minute swapper uh, pre-done movement with a dial and hands on it into another case turned into filing down a clasp and case back and spraying a chapter ring to make it matte black but all in all really nice little result there i have been i've just been enjoying this watch a lot I can't stop wearing it. Every time I try to wear another watch, I just keep thinking, oh, go back to the 62 mass. You're not done with it yet. And I think that, I mean, that speaks volumes, doesn't it? When you when you put a watch together and you can't stop wearing it, it you know, at, at the very least, it shows that you like it, which is, um, it makes all of the effort that I put into this worth it. And it's augmented by the fact that the whole point of this was to show off a budget case and it's not a bad little budget case and you can save yourself a whole load of trouble just get the one with the black chapter ring and then you don't have to pop the crystal out at all then you don't need a crystal press anyway i digress i've rambled on about this whole thing long enough uh even though there's no build log for this one i'm sure this video will still end up being about 20 minutes but yeah really chuffed about this great value case generally I'm just chuffed of how nice this is for how cheap it is. And I've for ages been looking for a case that will make me more enthused to wear this gray 62 mass 
dial. I, I've had it in several cases since I've got it and I've just never been too enthused. Even though I thought it looked quite smart in the kit watch that I put it in last year from the Mocky Mods, I never wore it. After I did that video, I wore it once and then promptly never wore it again. I just, something else in my watch box always caught my eye and I just never felt the urge to wear it. And then as soon as I've got it here in a 62 mass case where it clearly belongs, I can't stop wearing it. So quite a good little case for the money, especially if you're looking for a bargain. Get yourself a milled clasp to throw on there and if the case back doesn't bother you then as long as you've got the one pre-done with the black chapter ring and you, you don't you won't have to do any spray painting like i did you're gonna have a fantastic little watch and i can recommend it top hat sapphire crystal a nice supposedly ceramic bezel insert on there it is using a retention wire yeah i mean it's nice and smooth it's nice and firm and while I still prefer a click ring, it's pretty good. For a budget watch, this is pretty cool. Love the fact that it was so cheap and yet pretty decent quality. Yeah, the bracelet's bottom of the barrel, but at least it's bottom of the barrel of something you would still actually get. Uh, anything lower quality than this and you would throw it in the bin. But this is doable, it's, it's, it's okay. I, I wish that it was better, but it's okay. And it's got solid end links that fit quite nicely, so there's a plus. And once you throw a milled clasp on there, it's decent enough. So yeah, smart 62 mass case, great on a budget, and I can't stop wearing it. So anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling now. I hope you've enjoyed this video of my bizarre journey of what should have just been a simple case swap turning into filing down a case back and a clasp and spray painting a chapter ring. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time.